and welcome to another episode of Exploring Standards. I am Jess, your host, and today I am speaking with Ty Brosh, Division Vice President of Sales at Align. How are you, Ty? I'm great. Thanks, Jess, and uh, thank you for having me today. You're welcome. So can you just tell us a bit about yourself and uh, about Align uh, before we get started? Sure thing. So um, I lead Align's sales division for essentially the European and Asia Pacific region. Um, I used to be a SOC 2 auditor back in the day, uh, conducting things like SOC 2, HIPAA, SOC 1. Um, so I used to be a pr practitioner in the field, and then I moved over to the commercial side uh, about five or six years ago. Okay. And uh, I work for a company called Align. Uh, so Align is a information security and cybersecurity um uh, audit and certification uh, firm. So we would do audits like SOC 2 or certifications like ISO 27001. Wonderful. Thank you very much. So uh, you just mentioned a bit there that, uh, about SOC 2, and that is our topic of discussion today. Um, so I'm going to go straight with my first question, which is I think the question that most people have is what is SOC 2? Right. Great question. So I'll, I'll give you a, uh, I guess, three three answers. So one, I'll give you okay. the textbook definition. So SOC 2 is an internal controls report applicable for service organizations that do not impact their customers' financial reporting. Um, that's a mouthful and it doesn't yep. tend to resonate with uh, with everyone. So then I always <laughs> kind of get a give a more general definition, which is it is a um, internal controls report. So we're looking at the internal controls of a business and we're judging on if those controls mitigate a certain risk that is published by a, uh, a regulatory body. In this case, it would be the AICPA. Um, and then one level down in a more general term is it, it's a third party vendor management report, meaning it's going it's a report that gives your customers the assurance that you're meeting a minimum best practice of information security. Mm -hmm. OK, perfect. So. Uh... What are SOC 2 audits designed for? Or sorry, who are SOC 2 audits designed for? Yeah, so who they're designed for goes right into the name of, uh, or I guess the definition of them. Uh, okay. So it is a service organization uh, type report, meaning it's most applicable to those businesses that are service organizations. Everything that would be a software as a service, infrastructure as a service, platform as a service. If you are providing a service to a business or a consumer, um, you are technically applicable to a SOC 2 audit. Now, with that said, the majority of businesses that do undergo uh, SOC 2 audits would be those uh, in the software space or the tech space, as they have the highest propensity of uh, impacting information security or, or data security. Okay, brilliant. So we're looking at sort of the service providers. and um, What are the components of SOC 2 compliance? So the, compo the components of it, I guess I would, I would draw back to the actual deliverable or report. So a SOC 2 uh, report, uh, that is what you're delivering or you're receiving at the end of, of the audit, um, it's really made up of uh, essentially five components. So the deliverable itself is, is quite robust. So typically it would be about 100 pages in length. Um, the first thing that a customer is going to find is a management's representation letter. Now, this is unique to SOC 2. Um, this is a requirement that actually came down through the ranks after Enron, uh, when there was kind of a, a you know some a fraudulent activity uh, where management wasn't necessarily reporting the truth. So, mm -hmm. on every single SOC report that exists, um, the company that is being audited, the management must sign a representation letter stating that everything that they've provided to the auditor to their to their knowledge is true and accurate. Um, so that's the first component. Um, the second component is an actual opinion letter. Now this opinion letter has to be signed by a certified public accountant or the acronym for that would be a CPA. Um, most of the time those uh, those CPAs are gonna be US based as it is a uh, an American regulated institution. Mm -hmm. um, but that opinion letter is the auditor opining to the fact that this business or the scope that has been tested either meets the SOC 2 criteria or, or does not meet. And uh, so that's another unique component that, that customers will find within a SOC, a SOC 2 report. Then after that is where I really think we start to see the value that SOC 2 brings and why a lot of businesses nowadays are turning towards SOC 2. And, and that is the system description. So within a SOC 2 report, there's quite a lengthy section that is 
um, made up of a description in a narrative form of what does the business do? Um, what was the scope that was tested today? And then what are some of the technical components within their business, describing things like infrastructure, uh, different third parties that they may utilize to provide their service, and then some high level information on their information security practice and in, in policies and procedures. Um, so that system description gives the reader of the report a really good idea of, you know, what are the what are the components of this business that I need to be aware of? And uh, and it gives you kind of a look under the hood, so to say, of uh, what's to come in the next section of the report, which okay. that would be the testing matrices. So again, unique to SOC 2, the reason why this is such a large deliverable um, is that the fourth section of the report would be the actual controls. So if you review a SOC 2 report, you'll see that there are listings line by line of what was the criteria as published by the standard, and then what is the specific internal control that the business has in place to mitigate that risk that was identified. So you get to see the details of exactly what this business that was audited um, has in place from a control standpoint, and then ultimately what was the auditor's findings. Um, and, and that leads me to the final uh, piece. SOC 2 does give management, so in this case, the, the customer, the ability to respond to any findings that might have been in the report. And that would be the, the kind of the fifth component. So if you do have any nonconformities, as they're known as in, in ISO, or in this case, exceptions, as they're known in SOC 2, um, mm -hmm. the management team does have an ability to respond and just let the reader know what was their action item that they took after finding out that they do in fact have a, an exception or nonconformity. So those would be the, the five major components of, of a SOC 2 report. Um, and again, I, I think it's a, it's a great deliverable that really does give the reader uh, of the report a lot of insight into you know, the company's control structure. Yeah, it seems it seems very fairly detailed, and you said a lot of things that are, are unique to, to SOC 2, which is very interesting. And I think we're going to circle back to that in a moment. Uh, but also, in there, you, you mentioned it was American. Um, so I want to ask now, what does SOC 2 mean for UK businesses? Mm -hmm. It's a great question, um, and my answer would have been different if we would have you know talked maybe three or four years ago. Okay. So it is a we call it an American standard because the regulatory body that has published and regulates and manages the SOC 2 standard is the American Institute of Certified Public Accountants or the AICPA. Mm -hmm. So that is a, it's the regulatory body um, and they're based in the US, but SOC 2 is still very much a global standard. Um, I, I personally obviously represent Align's um, EMEA and APAC region, and we have customers from Hong Kong to Spain to the, to the UK uh, and obviously the States and, and abroad. So there's really no piece of the world that isn't applicable to it. And the reason why specifically UK business should be interested in SOC 2 is, one, is the US a strategic market for them? Um, so if you are a UK business, let's say you're a software uh, company in the UK, and you know that one of your strategic go-to-market strategies is going to be to sell into the US um, as it is one of the larger economies uh, in the globe then you should know that SOC 2 is likely going to be a requirement for you down the road um, because most uh, most US-based companies are very used to receiving SOC 2 reports and that ends up being their third-party vendor management requirement. So um, it can be a bit of a barrier to entry if your team isn't aware of what SOC 2 is or, or you don't currently have one. Whereas ISO 27001, which is kind of the cornerstone of, of information security in, in the UK and Europe, um, most businesses have that in place or are aware of it. So it's just learning a little bit about SOC 2 and, and why you should be aware of it if the US is a strategic market. And then the other thing that really has changed uh, that I mentioned in the beginning in the last three years or so is that we are seeing regulated industries within the UK, um, specifically central government, that is putting out uh, different tenders or RFPs that actually call out SOC 2 as a requirement um, in combination with ISO or sometimes instead of ISO. Um, okay. So if you are working in a regulated industry in the UK, uh, banking, insurance, um, healthcare, you should be aware that SOC 2 could be coming down the pipeline uh, as a requirement for your team. Okay, very interesting. Uh, you've actually led me really nicely on to my next question, uh, where you mentioned about ISO 27001. So what are the differences between sort of SOC 2 and ISO 27001? 
So I, I guess I'll start with the similarities. Um, okay. One, they both address uh, information security. So mm -hmm. obviously ISO is an information security management system uh, certification. And just like that, SOC 2 is, is very much focused on InfoSec. They both mitigate information security risks. Um, okay. So again, in, in the basis and the core components of both standards. And then also on the, the similarity side, they're used to ensure that proper controls are in place and instilling trust from your customer base. Um, it tells you if you have either or, or, or both, it's telling your customers that you should trust our team. We have the proper security controls in place. So those are the, the similarities. Um, where I think the two tend to differ is uh, largely in the deliverable. So an ISO, uh, an ISO 27001 certification is just that. It's a cer certification and you receive a certificate. That mm -hmm. certificate's typically a one to two page PDF um, that has some stamps and seals on it and also your scope and will essentially give your customer assurance to say, if you have this certificate, we know you've been audited by a third party and, and you've been certified to the standard. SOC 2 is not a certification. Um, it's actually known as okay. a attestation. And so uh, if you ever see a business saying that we're SOC 2 certified, it, it's like that, that, that they just don't know that it's not technically a certification. Um, so okay. you would want to say you're SOC 2 compliant and that you've received an independent attestation to prove that. Um, so the, the, the deliverable is different. We, we mentioned ISO one to two pages. Um, SOC 2 would be arguably up to 100 pages. Um, so right. you get a little bit more depth in uh, into what was tested rather than just receiving a you know a, a one page document. Um, the other thing I would say that that differs is ISO twenty seven thousand one tends to be very policy based and is very management centric. Um, mm -hmm. It's in the name of uh, of the standard itself, so it's focusing on how is management involved in the information security process. SOC two tends to be a bit more technical. Um, it does rely on policies and procedures, but it will go into the minutia of, you know, what are the specific security configurations that you have within your, your AWS uh, environment? Or So it does get into the details a little bit technically, and mm -hmm. that's where we tend to see customers experience a little bit of a different audit. Great. Thank you. I think you've done really well there to sort of bring that apart. Um, I'd argue it sounds like the SOC 2 gives a bit more information uh, a lot more information than uh, the, the ISO 27001. Uh, going into my final question is, uh, who can perform a SOC 2 audit? Great, great question. Um, the only, uh, so the only organizations out there that can issue an accredited SOC 2 report would be a certified public accountant. Okay. Um, so my recommendation to businesses is always before you were to engage with uh, a SOC 2 auditor, um, you should travel to the AICPA's website there is a, a peer reviewed um, search bar where you can okay. type in the, the business's name and then find out, are you actually accredited or have you gone through a recent peer review to uphold the AICPA's requirements to be an, issuer, an issuing body of, of a SOC 2 report? So you can find that on the AICPA's website. Um, Brilliant. I'm just going to say... I, Sorry, I'm yeah. going to jump in and just quickly say I will uh, pop a link in our mm -hmm. show notes for anyone who wants to see that. I'll pop a link into to that website for you guys. That, that that would be great. And so any any CPA can technically issue one. Um, okay. Now, uh, where people always get a bit confused is uh, they'll say, well, aren't CPAs the people that do taxes and, and financial audits as well? And, and the answer is yes, um, that is correct. So the the next layer or the secondary layer of, of investigation you would want to do as a as a you know, prospecting SOC 2 customer is saying, one, I've identified that they are a CPA from great, but now I need to find out what is their experience in SOC 2? Um, is SOC 2 a core component of the CPA's business or is it just something that they do during when it's not tax season? Um, uh, aligned, uh, we, we're, we're solely a, an information security firm. So we are a CPA firm, but we don't do tax. We don't do finance. We only focus on uh, information security or cybersecurity audits. Um, but there, there's other firms out there as well. So we would just always recommend do your due diligence on, on your auditor, just like you would for, for any other standard. 
Perfect. Well, thank you so much for talking to me today. Um, I feel like you've really gone into sort of bringing apart what SOC 2 is, how it can benefit UK businesses as well. Um, I will say that um, I'm going to put links into all information that we talked about today. So Align, the Peer Review website. Um, so thank you so much today for talking to me today. Um, anything else you'd like to add before we sign off? No, I, I think, um, you know, Ascent is it, it, a great organization um, to be able to help businesses get ready. I think that's that's another uh, misnomer as well, where um, there is a bit of groundwork that businesses will need to do to get ready for an audit. Um, okay. So an organization, you know, like yours would, would be well suited to help businesses put the policies and procedures in place before bringing in an independent auditor like Align. Brilliant. Thank you so much. So you have been listening to Exploring Standards. I've been talking to Ty Brosh, the Division Vice President of Sales at Align. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed today's episode. If you have, please remember to subscribe, like, and uh, leave a comment to let me know what you thought. Have a good day. Thank you. Thanks, Jess.